Our lives are defined by the way we see the world. So let's reimagine, reimagine, and reimagine again. Hi, everybody. Um, so today, I'm going to be introducing you, introducing you to something that contributes to approximately 9% of the global um, carbon emissions that contribute to climate change. And I'm going to tell you how my, myself, my team, and researchers around the country and world are working to solve this problem. So what I'm talking about is something that you see every day. It's something that you walk on, uh, something that you drive on, and something that you really rely on but it might often go unnoticed. What I'm talking about is concrete. Um, so to what I have here is what's called a concrete masonry unit or a concrete block. Thanks for everyone for bringing it up. They're a bit heavy. Um, and this is something that you see in buildings all around you and uh, in any kind of home improvement store. And although we see concrete every day, it really goes unnoticed in our lives. And you might not, because of that, you might not be aware that cement and concrete are responsible for almost one-tenth of the global carbon emissions every year. And this poses really a huge challenge to our, how society can reduce our climate impact. So how can something so mundane and kind of everyday and commonplace as concrete be such a big uh, problem and such a big deal in, in the battle for climate change? First, it's really important to get a sense of the scale at which concrete is produced every year. So concrete is actually the most used building material in the entire world, um, with more than 20 billion tons produced every year. So that's around 5,000 pounds every year for every person on the planet. So for me, for you, everybody in this auditorium, 5,000 pounds of concrete are produced each year. That's second only in terms of materials that are produced and handled by humans. That's second only to water. So it's really kind of hard to imagine this level of concrete produ production that's uh, available in the world. And this is more than any kind of other construction materials, be it glass, wood, or steel, or any other metal, and it's done so at the lowest cost. So why do we use so much concrete? There's a few main reasons. Um, first, one thing is it's durable. So concrete can be used in applications where it's uh, in contact with uh, water and soil. So think of things like building foundations, or bridges and dams. Uh, other materials like steel and wood would either rot or rust away. And concrete can be, be produced really um, cheaply um, from materials that are abundant in the Earth's crust all around the world. This is really important, especially for the growth and development of infrastructure in developing countries around the world. So given that uh, concrete is such a critical and uh, widely used building material, let's take a minute to look at what it really is. What concrete is, is a mixture of cement, water, and aggregate. Aggregate is just a fancy word for sand and rocks. So the mixture of cement and water forms what's called a cement paste. And this cement paste acts like a glue binding those rocks together. When we mix these materials together, what you get is a fluid mixture that you can pour into a mold and then let set. The setting process turns it from a liquid material into a solid that becomes strong, and then you can then drive on, et cetera, et cetera. So it really is simple as to set it and forget it. And that's another reason why concrete is so popular. Um, but because this process is so simple and uh, kind of happens every day all around us, we not, might, might not know that there's actually kind of a lot of uh, chemistry going on in this that makes this happen. So by mixing cement with water, we're actually starting the, a kind of complex chemical reaction called cement hydration. And what cement hydration does is turn uh, the initial cement and water into more solids that then uh, kind of connect together and bind together and then increase the strength of the material. So this can happen at any day kind of average conditions uh, anywhere around the world and uh, without any special equipment. Uh, so that's really cool to be able to pour and have a real chemical reaction going on uh, anywhere around us. Uh, so when construction workers are working pouring concrete on site, you might not think of them as this, but they're really uh, like performing chemical reactions. So this is actually pretty amazing. 
because if you take most any material, grind it up and mix it with water, you'll just make a big mess. Uh, whereas cement is really special in this way. And how you get cement to be this special is to undergo uh, a really interesting production process, and that's really where the majority of CO2 emissions from concrete come from. To make cement, you start by uh, digging up materials from the Earth's crust uh, that have a lot of calcium, silicon, and oxygen. So these are mainly materials like limestone and different types of clay. These then get crushed up and mixed together. And then, uh, to convert these into cement, we have to go to undergo this high temperature process uh, where they go into what's called a rotary kiln that you see here. So this happens at, at over uh, 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. So that takes a lot of energy, and uh, that comes from burning fuels. So that process in itself, you can imagine, emits a lot of CO2. But there's actually an even bigger source of CO2 emissions in this cement manufacturing. This is something called calcination of limestone. So that limestone that we added as a raw feed material um, actually contains CO2 within it. So we're really digging up stored carbon from the Earth's crust and then heating it and releasing that CO2 directly as a gas. This is actually responsible for over, around 65% of CO2 emissions in the cement manufacturing process. And then all told, basically for every ton of cement that's produced, we have one ton of CO2 emitted into the atmosphere. So, how can we go about reducing the CO2 emissions of concrete when the majority of them come from making cement? There have been a number of different uh, kind of improvements to the sufficiency of this process, um, looking at kind of better kiln designs and using diff diff more efficient fuels, but these really do nothing to address the CO2 emissions from calcination. And so there's a really huge gap in the available technologies to reduce CO2 emissions from this process. But what if we could really reinvent concrete? What if we could reimagine the way we produce this critical building material? And what if by doing so, we could actually have a way to take up CO2 emissions from other uh, industrial sources? Think of things like power plants, uh, chemical refining. What would that look like? So, it turns out it looks basically exactly like another concrete block. Uh, and that's by design. So this concrete block on the left is uh, weighed with uh, CO2, and it uh, can fill the exact same performance and strength criteria as a normal concrete block. But the production of this block on, the, on your right emits actually less than 50% of the CO2 emissions of a standard block. And how this is possible is from a technology called CO2 mineralization. So CO2 mineralization is a bit of a mouthful, uh, but basically what it means is turning this gaseous CO2 and converting it into a solid uh, mineral state. And this is something that's permanent um, in any ambient conditions and won't re be released uh, in any standard timeline. Where am I? So, how this process works, first we start by identifying a source of CO2 emissions. For example, our current technology is looking at using flue gases from a coal-fired power plant, um, like the one you see here at number one. And second, we form concrete products using the same kind of standard uh, methods used in any everyday concrete, but critically, we replace the cement with another type of mineral called hydrated lime, which actually absorbs CO2 in this reaction. Third, and where the magic really happens, is in this curing chamber, where the flue gas from the power plant is combined with the fresh concrete blocks, and that undergoes this reaction, taking up the CO2 from the gas stream and locking it away in that block. So the result is a concrete product with less than half the CO2 emissions, and that can be ready to be used in a building. So the potential impact of this technology is really huge. Um, if we're able to transition all of the concrete production globally to this method, we'll have a way to um, take up over 1 billion tons of CO2 every year into these products. That's cheaply, uh, it's done cheap, cheaply, efficiently, and from nearly any CO2 emitting facility. And we're right on the cusp of making this happen. And in the research in my group, uh, we've gone from making things uh, a few grams to over uh, 10 tons of concrete every day. And with uh, green building becoming more and more important, with things like LEED and Living Building Challenge, there's many more options that give you, a consumer, the ability to choose low carbon alternatives and to make cities and infrastructure greener. So with our research and uh, spreading the word to people like you, 
I really hope we can raise awareness about the challenge of concrete and turn this problem into a universal and scalable solution in the fight against climate change. Thank you.